Okay, let's look at what we should do with all this information, all these checkpoints and stuff like that. First of all, if at all possible, used or new, you should be picking the axe out yourself, if possible. Often that's not possible. In this age, we order stuff off the internet because it's convenient, because it's the only way we can get the thing, because it's cheaper, all these things. But if you're not picking the thing out yourself, uh, there's a good chance you're going to get something that you don't like. If you're going with used axes, then uh, let's say on eBay, you know, in person, now you have a checklist that I gave you, so you can look at all that stuff. On eBay or online, you're going to want to have pictures of the top and bottom of the axe, so you can look at the eye thickness and the orientation of the, the actual oval and make sure it's not skewed off to one side. If the photos are really good, you might get a, an idea of how the bit symmetry is, if it curves off to one side or something like that. That's pretty hard to tell from a photo. You know, you want photos of clear photos of both sides so you can like scan over them on eBay. If the pictures are high resolution, you can click in and zoom around like this and look pretty carefully at all the surfaces. So, you know, check those out really carefully and be picky. You know, take your time, be patient. Axes are, new axes are coming up and selling just constantly on eBay and I think there's just going to be more and more for a while. You know, don't shop just by brand because it's no guarantee at all. Let me tell you, here's a story of two axes right here. So this is a Kelly Champion. You know, it's, uh, you know, Kelly Axe Works. It's like a uh, respected American brand. But this axe head has numerous problems. It's deeply pitted. It has coarse grinding marks that go all the way up to the edge. The edge is wavy this way, indicating that someone ground it pretty hard and didn't really know what they were doing. The eye uh, walls are not the same thickness. This is considerably thinner. That means that when you put this on, it's either going to mount crooked or you're going to have to make some kind of compensation to keep it from doing so. Um, the edge is, the bit is not very symmetrical. You know, everything's cool up to right about here, and then this entire bit just goes off to the side like that. There's no fixing that. You know, there's no fixing that. This axe has no name. It just says Made in USA. It, this is beautiful. The fit and finish are beautiful. Um, it's in great shape. The eye is symmetrical. This could still end up selling on eBay for less than this axe just because there's no name on it. Don't shop by uh, how sexy the shape is. I mean, you know, do what you want, but that's a mistake if you actually are trying to get a functional tool. Now, if an axe comes with a handle, people are going to want to charge you more for it, and they don't know what to look for, and they don't, they don't know anything. It's just an axe with a handle, so it's worth more. This I got for five bucks because I told the guy, I said, look, this is cracked right here, and I may or may not be able to salvage this handle to use for a while. The head's not that great, and it isn't. It was twisted, you know, again, it's like I might be able to fix it, I might not. It was super loose, and so I talked the guy down from like 12 bucks or 15 bucks to 5 bucks, And that's what that axe should be. It should be a $5 axe, at least on today's market. This axe here, I bought it at a yard sale, and the guy was, uh, you know, I was trying to bargain with the guy, and he's like, he, I think he had like 15 or 12 on it. I was trying to give him 7 I think I paid 7 bucks. And he's like, he's like, no, no, like, look, it has a great handle. Like, the handle's really solid. And I'm like, dude, the handle's about to fall, literally about to fall in half. I mean, it was pretty much in two pieces already, like, split all the way down. I'm like, actually, no. But they just don't, people don't really pay attention. And, you know, you can use that as a bargaining point is what I'm saying. But if the handle is no good and you're just going to end up with a head, then, you know, point that out to them and try to get the thing cheaper. So I know people have told me that I have a hard time finding used axes. Not a problem for me where I live here. I live in Northern California. There's kind of a logging territory. But I don't think most of the axes that I get here were actually, you know, coming out of the logging industry. Some of them, but not most of them. And I don't even go out that much. You know, I go to town once, uh, once every week or two. And I go to the junk shop. I go to the thrift stores, which almost never have axes at the thrift stores. And I don't go to flea markets anymore. I don't go to that many yard sales at all. And yet I've collected in the last two years, I can show you a bunch of axes I bought. I got this one for, for five bucks. I got this one for seven bucks. That was $3, that was $5. These are just stuff I got locally, you know, more recently. This was, I think 12 or 15 at a yard sale. That's a Grand Spores which means nothing except that I can sell it for a lot. This one, I think, was 15, and it's got, like, a perfect, nice handle. That's a plum. And there's more. I know there's more that I've picked up in the last two years. This is within the last two years. 
so they're out there. Scope out all of the junk stores and antique stores in the area and just make a habit of whenever you're driving in that area, go check them out. A lot of places like that will keep a call list and you just say, call me if you get any axes. Last time, I, I, when I bought this for $3 at the junk store I go to habitually, every time I'm in town I go there. And a lot of the axes I bought in the last two years have been from there. There was a guy walking out with two hatchets and an axe head, like just as I was walking in. And he was on their call list. I thought I was on their call list, but I guess they called that guy first. Employ your friends, like expand your team. Get your friends out there looking, say, hey, I'm really into axes right now. Just keep your eyes out wherever you go. If you go into any like yard sales and stuff like that, call me. Now we have phones, right? Everybody has their phone on them. They can take a picture or even do like a video chat. And say, yeah, check this, I found this out, you want to buy this for $7, or is that too much? A friend was going to the flea market, and I told her, I was like, look, if you see any axes, just call me, take pictures, send me pictures. And she sent me a picture of this, it's a Kelly Works axe, it's kind of, you know, pitted and stuff, and it has some, it ends up to have some issues, and I may or may not ever mount it, but it was only $5. And I was like, yeah, that's worth the risk, grab that for me. At that same flea market, she met a guy with a tailgate full of axes, and I could have bought a, you know, another cruiser axe and one of these, but I just didn't want to spend the money, and I didn't, I don't really need them. Okay, let's talk about new axes now, and maybe compare the option of uh, new to used. Most new axes are not manufactured very well, and some of them also have a real poor design. That's becoming more and more common. This is a modern problem where, and it makes sense if you think about it, because people don't use axes anymore. Very few people use an axe at all seriously, and that goes for probably the people that are designing most new axes and uh, run these companies that make and sell axes. It's pretty apparent in some of the designs that are coming out and some of the, the stuff we see that that's the case. But the result is that there's a lot of crappy axes on the market. So I'm a proponent of, of getting inexpensive axes to use, but I don't, I don't mean to advocate going to the hardware store and buying the crappiest, you know, $20 to $25 axe. Because you can get a decent axe for, you know, $30 to $35. Be careful what you buy. Uh, if it has a milled handle, if the fit and finish look really bad, then, you know, don't buy it. And again, there's no guarantee with any brand, even if it's a decent brand, that every axe they send out is going to be perfect because they can't afford to do that, right? I mean, they're going to have, it, just because of the nature of manufacturing axes, they're going to have stuff that's a little, you know, it's out of symmetry, and they're going to send the stuff out anyway. It's real easy to get away with that because the public just doesn't know what to look for. You know, if you're looking at all this stuff, there's very few people that are savvy enough to look at all this stuff that I'm just, I'm just you know, telling you about here. And again, just because a company has a good reputation in general or makes good axes doesn't mean that everything they send out is going to be, you know, perfect. But far from it. You know, everyone, every company is going to send out poor quality axes at some point. If you have to buy sight unseen, like I, there's no hardware store I can go to that I know of where I can get a decent axe. The closest is uh, some of the chainsaw dealers carry these Husqvarna axes made by Hulk. But other than that, you know, no one carries counsel in California that I know of. I, I mean, I've never seen them. And mostly it's just uh, the real junky stuff that's, uh, you know, manufactured overseas in third world countries. Labor and materials are cheap. The steel's probably not very good, etc. So buying online may be the only way you can get the axe, or it may be the way you can get the axe the cheapest or something like that. If you do, make sure that it's returnable because you could get something really wonky and unacceptable and have to send it back. Obviously, you're going to have to accept, you know, some imperfection in some part of the axe, or you're just going to be sending every single axe back. Uh, to find an axe that's really literally perfect is just not, it's not a reasonable expectation. So that's one option is you can talk to a dealer that actually is someone that chops. Like, for instance, I know Ben's Backwoods sells axes, and I've seen his videos. He actually can chop wood, you know, well. So maybe you could contact somebody like that and say look i'm i'm like a serious user or i'm you know serious about this tool please send me something that is uh, in alignment and has a decent handle and all that stuff but in any case still make sure that thing's returnable so let's talk about something specific just to give an example this husk barn of forest axe um, i went to pick this out in the store because i didn't want to just buy one online and have to ship it back, you know, and pay for the shipping to ship the thing back. But when I went to the store to look through the three that were in stock in this store, even though I had to pay more, two of them I would not have bought. And this one's not perfect, but it's like kind of good enough. You know, the bit's a little, a little wonked, but it's not horrible and the handle was nice. So I ended up getting that one. With Council Tool, um, I've recommended this uh, 
budget line boys axe quite a bit but this one came uh, with a soft steel so and I've heard that from at least two other people now so the guy from Omaha Knife also told me that the reason they carry this Forest Service version is because they had so much trouble with quality control on those. Like sometimes they're fine and sometimes they're not. So this axe is $70 and that one's usually about $30 to $35, something around there. The main difference here is that the Forest Service version by Council uh, is supposed to be a better steel and also the tempering process is supposed to be more careful so you're more likely to get something good. So I guess it's looking like with this version, it's kind of a crapshoot. So you're looking at, you know, 30 bucks, and you may have to send it back. I hear they're pretty good about returns. And then this one's about $70 shipped. So let's compare that to getting a used axe. So this is the handle and head that was sent to me by Adam West, who started West Woods on eBay. So these are made with air-dried hickory. And this head he got for $5. And the handles, I think they're about $19 or $20 on eBay. It seems like a lot, but you know, it's quality control. And then shipping's probably, I think, $10 on the handle. So let's say the handle's $30 and this is five. That's a $35 ax with a nice vintage head. It needs a little bit of work, but that's okay. So do, so do new axes. And that's something to keep in mind is, yeah, you're gonna do some work to a used ax to get it all hafted up, fitted, um, everything like that but with either one of these axes I'm probably going to end up unmounting it, removing the wedge, re-wedging it, um, tuning up the handle. They still need to be ground and filed just as much as any used axe does usually. So I've got an axe for $35 that's just pretty outstanding and you know I know I'm going to get a good handle from him and these are kind of more of a crapshoot. The fit and finish that was originally on this before it got you know rusted and pitted but just in general, build quality is uh, much better than these modern council axes. So that becomes a pretty good option. Now let's say that I had to buy this on eBay and it was 20 bucks, which it shouldn't be because it's severely pitted. And there's no name on it actually, even though he said it was, um, I think he said it was Kelly Works. Anyway, uh, let's say I had to pay 20 for this and 30 to get the handle shipped to my door. And then I put it together. Well, I still have an excellent axe for $50 versus this new axe for 70 which is probably going to have to be unmounted. Like most of the other people I've talked to that have gotten these, they either had the handles break or they had they became loose like right away and had to be redone. It has a plastic wedge, so I'm probably going to jump this on a little bit, get that plastic wedge out of there, re-wedge it, and you know get it all set back up. And again, it's still going to need about the same amount of filing that this still needs to get this in you know the cutting shape that I want it. By the way, I'm going to give this axe away once I get it set up the way I want it. It's super nice, it's really well balanced, the handle's beautiful, really nice axe. And remember again that using an axe is a package deal, right? You have to know how to sharpen it, you have to know how to grind it, you have to know how to replace the handle or tighten the handle, and all this stuff, and that just all comes together. So, you know, getting a used axe and putting your own axe together, even if you screw it up a little bit the first time, you're learning and, uh, you know, gathering these skills that you need to just be a competent axe user. And if you fit the axe yourself, you know, a skilled person at least can compensate for problems that you might have with the head if there's any issues. Um, in the factory, you know, they're going to mill the handle exactly the same every time. and it's, They're just going to press it into the the axe, drive a wedge in and send it out the door. And finally there's the issue of steel quality and if you buy a really cheap axe like a modern axe there's a chance that it's just going to be complete crap and the steel is going to be no good at all. Uh, a lot of vintage axes are made with very good steel. Some are, some aren't. Sometimes the temper is good, sometimes it's not. There's a high variability but if you get a, a really nice looking vintage axe head like this, you know again there's no name on this but the fit and finish is beautiful. It's very well finished it's nicely ground, uh, there's, you know, it's symmetrical and all that, chances are it's going to be pretty nice. So getting a used axe and putting a handle on it, if you know a good source of handles, can be a good option. You know, if you go to the hardware store to get a handle, you're probably not going to get a good handle, but you might, and at least you can sort through them. So definitely try that. I mean, it just never seems to work around here anymore. But I know some people have said they had decent luck getting good handles at the hardware store, so it's worth a look. If you can get a good handle, or if you have the skill to make one, which is, you know, a whole thing in itself, 
then I think Vintage is a great option and you're collecting that set of skills you know, that you might need. A couple of the axes that I'm most intrigued about trying, they're just too expensive. You know, um, the closest one that's affordable is maybe like, I think maybe 85 to $90 from Ben's Backwoods is the Halta Force Boys Axe, which I think is a two and a quarter pound axe with a 28 inch handle. I would prefer that it was the 20, a two and a half pound head. That's what I'd probably most recommend to most people to get started with, but they're actually very uncommon. Oddly, it's either two and a quarter pound and down, or usually up to three and a half and up. The one two and a half pound one I do know of is Helco, and it's well over $100. Looking at it, I don't see anything particularly special about it. Again, if you get, if you hunt eBay for a nice axe head like this for 20 bucks, maybe 25 shipped, that's probably going to be as good or better of an axe. Okay, I hope this video was useful. I just wanted to put all this stuff into one place and get people thinking about some of these things. So now you have like a full checklist and you can look the stuff over carefully. Again, if at all possible, pick the thing out yourself. I know that's often not possible, but um, it's ideal. So if you have a hardware store, for instance, that carries council tool, or the uh, Husqvarna, maybe go down there and look at it. All right, that's it for that video. Uh, stay safe as always, and good luck with all your axe endeavors out there looking for used heads and hunting around and all that stuff. Get your friends out there. Uh, expand your team and get your friends out there looking for axes for you.